My father is a man of many colors. On the nights when the moon stays asleep, he lotions his palms with pomegranate juice. The sugared blood pools in the creases of his skin, staining it India's red. Sometimes, my father scrubs his hands until they are nothing but flesh and fruit rinds. When he was younger, all skin knees and pocket knives, he must have slipped on a thousand marbles. My father's father was a welder who rolled and spun steel into tiny spheres. When he died, my father's hands became blue and free of pocket knives. To this day, he keeps a bag of marbles on our mantle. From time to time, he shakes the cool metal into his open palm and waterfalls it back and forth. See, this is the trouble with blue hands. They never let go of the things that scar them. They try so hard to be red again. My father doesn't like whistling because an old woman in India told him it was uncivilized. She perched herself on the edge of the Ganges River and kneaded dough with hands of stone. My father's hands were so calloused and bumpy, worn from the years he spent cradling marbles and pomegranates, so she taught him how to smoothen his skin by soaking it in the river and practicing henna on the rough patches in the creases where pomegranate juice once gathered was now India's orange blood. My father was the most deliberate artist, armed with a camel hair brush gifted to him by a local who is now somewhere far off. He softened himself by painting and repainting the same flesh. Now, the old woman on the Ganges has eggshell hands. She rests on a bed of banyan leaves and floats through the heart of the river teaching men how to calm their skin with the breath of India. For the span of 1,000 moons, my father washed his hands in the banks of the water, jingled a bag of marbles, and whistled a tune that only red, blue, and orange could understand.